What is up everybody? Matt with Micah Designs here. Today we're going to show you how to register and screen print four color process on white t-shirts. Be sure to check our description for links to these products and also just in case we miss something we'll leave an update in the description. Now stick around and we'll show you how it's done. Welcome back everybody. We're going to give you a quick rundown of the inks and the screens that we are using. We are using Union Inks Process Color Inks. So we have our yellow, our magenta, our Process Cyan, and black. A little tip before you do start printing, I would advise to mix your ink up really well so that way it will start to thin out because initially straight out of the court, it's going to be a little harder to work with. And this will help with getting your prints correct right off the bat. Here are the screens that we are using. They are 20 by 24 manual size frames. The mesh is 305 and we expose the art at 55 LPI. The emulsion that we did use for this is TZ Ulano emulsion and the reason being is it's a dual cure emulsion and it allows us to get those fine details with our multi-point exposure unit. When setting up screens for printing CMYK process printing you want to start from the lightest to the darkest. So we have our yellow there, magenta here, cyan, and our black. The reason why you do that, if you decided to print it CMYK, your yellow would actually start to pick up some of the cyan and magenta, making it look dingy. You won't get a bright yellow. And a quick little tip, when you output your film, be sure to include the information on the top of your film, so that way you know which color you're working with. All right, gang, we have our screens all taped off. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to load up a test t-shirt and then I'm going to ink up my black screen first because I'm going to use that as my basis to register everything up. Putting down a little bit of spray tag, I'm going to toss my test t-shirt on. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and ink my first screen up with my black. The black is a little runnier than the rest. I don't need too, too much because we're going to do about 25 of these shirts. I'm going to toss my squeegee in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flood this up and give it a couple passes just to clear it. And this will essentially lay down my point for registering everything up. I have my registration marks untaped. You have to excuse the little piece of tape I have on this screen here. It has a hole in it. This screen really needs to be remeshed, but for the sake of us doing our own shirts, I know this screen is fine. It's just a little bit of a pain in the butt that it's there. All right, let's go ahead and try that one more time. Just to get our ink clear through. Okay, and that looks pretty good for registering our screens up. We'll give you a little bit of a close up. You can see we have our registration marks on there, little center marks. And we have some at the top and the bottom. So that way I make sure all four corners are nice and registered up. Hopefully you guys can see me register this up okay. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna register this one screen and then I'm gonna register the rest and then I'll give you a close up of exactly how my marks are lining up. So, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen down my clamps here and I'm just going to line up all my registration marks in all four of the corners and then I'm gonna take a look at my center marks and see how we're lining up.
I'm just going to go ahead and lock it down. Let me give it a little bit of a wiggle. Just make sure nothing moves. And it looks like it's shifted this way just a little bit. So I'm going to tighten up my micro registration over here on this side. Just to kind of shift it this way a little bit. Let me give it a little bit of a wiggle again. And that looks great. Okay, we have this one all registered up. I'm gonna go ahead and register these other three screens and then we'll do a close up. All right guys, I'm gonna try my best to hopefully capture this on screen. Me actually registering one of these screens up. I know we're a little further out, but let's see if we can't show you on camera exactly how we're registering this up. And if you guys can even see it, you can see I can see it, but I don't know if it's easy to see on camera, but here's our center mark, and here are our top registration marks. So we have a set of these at the top and the bottom, and we're just gonna line everything up, with the exception that I'm gonna pull these registration marks up just a hair to compensate for stencil drags. That way, when you are pushing your squeegee along, it's going to drag on the stencil and push it just a touch of a few thousandths of an inch. So let's go ahead and try and line this up on camera. So we're lining these up and I'm looking over here and lining these up as well. And I'm just going to press down on the mesh to see where we are at. Looks like we use a little adjustment down here. Them up a little bit and I just use my hand to tap the screen around until I'm ready to lock it down and one of the things you kind of have to be careful with that I do I, I did it off camera before I registered everything up is I put my shirt under the flash dryer no print just loaded it up let it sit underneath the flash dryer for about a good 10 to 15 seconds that way if the shirt's going to shrink up it will shrink some but if you can before you even start registering your screen up when you're doing your test shirt put it on the pallet put it under the flash dryer for a moment and let it shrink up a little bit even when i'm doing a production run i'll put spray tack on all my pallets load my shirts up as i'm loading them up I'll rotate it and let it go underneath the flash before I even start printing on them. So I'll load one up on the pallet, spin it underneath the flash, load the next one until I get all the way back around to the first shirt and I'm ready to print. One of the things I'm going to check as well is the Mikey and then the phone number down here, which is probably a little bit off camera. All right, gang, I think we're all set. Let me grab the camera off the stand and show you where we're at. Okay, as I went to lock down my screen, I did notice that it shift just a little bit. It went that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank down on my micro adjustment over here, just a little bit, just to tighten it up. I'm gonna pick the screen up, give it a little bit of a wiggle, see where we're at. Still a little off, so I'm gonna crank down on it just a little more. And sometimes you just have to do these things just to make sure everything gets all nice and lined up. You should really take your time with this part and then make sure your screens are nice and locked down and not to bump your screens. That way you don't have any registration issues. Okay, finally, I think that is great. Okay, now that I got the camera off the stand, I can probably get a little bit better of a close up here. So here's our registration marks on each end as you see if I press down on the registration mark we're right on top we got our center one all centered up and then there's this corner here got this guy here and you can see what I'm talking about, how I put the registration just a touch higher. 
I could probably come down with it a little bit. So I'm gonna go back and just double check all these screens, make some fine adjustments. We'll be right back. Okay, I went and checked my registration. Everything seems good to me. So we're gonna go ahead and start running off some test prints. While we're on the subject of inking your screens up, this is what I'm talking about as far as just kind of getting your ink nice and loosened up. So that way you'll have the best results once you start going to press and, and doing your test prints. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink the rest of these up and then we'll be right back. Okay, got my screens all nice and inked up. Got my squeegees ready. It's time to rock and roll. All right, gang, we're ready to start running off these separate colors. Just keep in mind when you are doing this, I would just flood and then do a hit with each one of these. So that way, if you do hit it twice, you can get a tendency to have a lot of dot gain, meaning your dot that's supposed to be this big will expand and be that big. And we're doing this wet on wet, so it will take multiple prints to get rid of that and for it to start to turn out correct. So let's go ahead and do our yellow. Just gonna flood it up. And we're just gonna give it a firm pass. We're gonna try and keep our squeegee fairly upright. There's our yellow. As I mentioned, we're doing this wet on wet. Keeping a fairly upright print stroke. There is our magenta. And next, our cyan. Okay, so this is how we're looking right out the gate. This is what my design looks like. And you see it looks pretty good right out the bat, but I'm gonna do a few more test prints just to kind of really get the ink flowing. I'm gonna take this guy off, run it through his conveyor dryer real quick. And then I'm going to print on the back side of it. So I like to print on my test shirts as many times as I possibly can so I'm not wasting them. These are just really toss away shirts to be honest. Next side of our test shirt. You'll have to excuse the little stain right there. It's from my hands getting all nice and dirty. So let's go through this again. Nice firm pushes. And you wanna be very consistent with each one of your prints because printing CMYK manually, you are gonna get some variations with how hard you're pushing from t-shirt to t-shirt. There we go. We got test print number two. Looks pretty good. Registration marks are looking fairly spot on. Pretty damn close. Are a little pickier. I'd bump it around a little bit, but I think everything's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and go into production. All right, gang, I have my registration marks all taped off. I'm going to put down a little spray tag and we're going to do a little production. I hope this video was helpful for those of you out there that are either experienced or new to screen printing. But if you go over to our channel, you'll see that we have lots of helpful tutorials just like this one and we'll be posting some more. So if any of you guys have any suggestions for our next video, feel free to leave us a comment. Look at that. That's coming out nice. <laughs> this camera's in the way, so it's gonna make production just a little slower for me than it normally would. 
but that's not a big deal. This is all about sharing information and helping each other out, isn't it? All right, let's go ahead and do our next t-shirt. Don't forget, when you are doing these shirts, to so just be as consistent as possible. For us here in this situation, it's not too big of a deal because these are gonna be individually boxed with some other goodies like pens, stickers, possibly a brochure. We're still trying to figure that out, but these are going to just be giveaway shirts. And there really won't be a side-by-side -side comparison So just keep that in mind, if, if you're doing shirts for a client and you are doing CMYK, just to be very consistent because it will, it will start to show from shirt to shirt. And as you start to get into the rhythm of things, you'll go a little faster. And you can whip these things out pretty quick. Even though I'm having to walk around this camera stand, which is right by the entry point of my conveyor dryer, I'm still able to crank these out fairly quick. This type of printing can go really quick if you're doing wet on wet. You're keeping one of your pallets stationary, and you just crank them out. I tend to like my press to gradually swing around. As you can see, the yellow is about to come up. So that way, I'm, as soon as I get my shirt loaded on, I'm ready to do the next print. And one of the things that I did do off camera, maybe want to swing the magenta back around, is I, I taped off the there was a little bit of magenta going into the cyan and the yellow, making the cyan a little bit deeper of a blue than I would like. So I take that off. So that way I'm really just getting the, a true yellow and a true cyan. See, here's my magenta. You can probably see the tape. And that's one of the things about process printing, four color process printing is just because you get everything set up on press, you get it all registered. Sometimes you might have to go back and make some fine adjustments. So that way your colors are coming out absolutely correct. I'm gonna do this one more t-shirt and we will be done. I won't be done with production, but I think this is probably a good enough demonstration. That and I wanna give Shannon the shop now a kiss. <laughs> All right, gang, here is the finished print. It looks pretty good to me. It's starting to get dark out here. So it's getting a little hard to see some of these colors, but this is a nice bright pink. It's not looking like that so much on the camera, but I'm happy with it. So you can see that we have some greens going on here, some oranges, a little bit of red, some pink, some purple, Transitioning into blue, teal, and, and a green. So, there you have it. I'm happy with it, and there are my shirts. <laughs> this is my makeshift camera stand. It's a guitar or vocal boom mic with some screen printing tape. Well guys, that's about it for this tutorial. I hope you guys learned a little something. As always, remember to subscribe, hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button, 
and we'll see you next time. <laughs>